bobby pin part of my hair back. Cause like, I freaking can't stand how it just gets in my eyes all the time. Bobby pinning my hair, bobby pinning my life. Hey gang, how's it going? So I want to answer a frequently asked question that is asked to me a lot on social media and in my real life. And that is, how do you keep going to the gym? How is it that you can keep doing it? So um, I'll tell you what has worked for me and I would like to hope that it works for you. And if it doesn't, that's okay. If it does, that's great. I have found that when it comes to the gym, there is no like surefire way to keep you staying there. And there's not a surefire way to get you to go. You know, so I just am telling you what has worked for me and and you can either apply that to yourself or apply a similar rendition of it to yourself so that it, you can go if going to the gym, eating right, and being active is something that you want to do. Some people don't want to do that. And it's funny because they'll tell me that as though like I'm going to judge them and I'm like, no, I get it. Like not everyone cares to go to the gym. Not everyone cares to eat clean and eat healthy. That's okay. I'm not going to judge you for it. I'm not going to think less of you for it. And shame on those who do. I've been going to the gym since 2011, uh, but in 2012 I took an eight month break. Now, I kind of at times kick myself and wonder why I didn't go to like another gym or another location or, or would go at a different time. I stopped going because um, there were just some weird people that were there that just, it just got weird. Like there were some people who uh, ended up being like real emotional vampires for me. And it, and it got to where they were, uh, what is the word, like they couldn't understand boundaries. And, and of course I, being one who didn't really understand boundaries at the time, let them completely run over my boundaries and then it ended up wearing me out and I ended up just not going to avoid them all together. It was weird, like weird people that gave me the creeps. I, I will hear of friends, family, uh, people online, whatever, who are like, the beginning of the new year, I'm going to eat right and I'm gonna go to the gym every day and I'm gonna pick up this cycling class and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Every time they say that, I, I cringe. I'm not gonna lie because I worry that it's only gonna be a couple weeks, a month or whatever, and then they're gonna stop going. And then they will feel bad that they stopped going, right? You know, and we always do. We, we have the best of intentions to go to the gym and then we end up not going because of whatever reason, because we're burned out, because life happens, because something stressful happened and that's taking up a lot of our time, you know, that kind of a thing. And so then it's like six months down the road that we have not been to the gym and suddenly, we are angry at ourselves because had we continued on this path of eating right and going to the gym, think of how great we would look now, you know, or how we would feel now. Think of how great we would feel now if we had just continued on going to the gym. I remember doing that to myself all the time. I would be like, I'm gonna eat healthy, and then I would, and then I'd fall off the bandwagon, or, um, you know, it's just one of those things where we go on vacation and then it's really hard to get back on the bandwagon after you've been off of it because you know being off the bandwagon is quite enjoyable I have to tell you like food food is so wonderful so I'm gonna tell you guys a few things that work for me I have like a lot of things going on in my head and I should have written these things down so I might need to write some things down okay so so I wrote a few <laughs> I wrote a few things on my <laughs> on my sink here with this black eyeliner pencil. I'm trying to think of exactly how to how to begin. There's a couple things that I want to like begin with, but I don't know which one is best to do first. I think okay. I want you guys to think of a person you absolutely love, like you would do anything for. A person that in your mind could do no wrong, although they are human and I'm sure they've done plenty of things wrong. I want you to consider how much you um, are happy when they're happy and how much you are sad when they're sad and and how much you see the best in them and you see the potential they have to be something great, right? I want you to consider that. And I want you to consider how much you want to give them the world, if you could, because they deserve that, right? Because you love them so much. Now, why can't we love ourselves the same? That was kind of something that, that helped me in wanting to be better. Wanting to not only be healthy, but to just be a better person. And that's when I realized how little I cared for myself. 
um, when I turned the tables of love from someone, anyone, to me. Why can't I love myself the way I love these people, right? Or this one person. Why, why can I give them all that love and yet I can't give it back to me? Like, and I understand there's the whole like, oh, well, you're being vain, you're being prideful, you're being selfish. No, 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 no. No, this is just loving who you are and enjoying the person that you are because you're going to be in this body for the rest of your life. You're going to be with this soul for all of your existence. Why are we not loving that and choosing to love it? Even if we have to grow to love it, why are we not even trying? So when I finally like turned it around and, and realized that I needed to love myself and then really realized that in order for me to love anyone properly, I needed to love myself first and that it was okay to put myself first. That was the other thing too. I felt like I was constantly putting myself on the back burner for many reasons. I mean, here I was a young mom of three kids, three very small kids. Of course, I was always put on the back burner because there wasn't any time for me to even think of myself because I had three small kids that needed my attention and needed my care and needed my love. Yeah, I put myself on the back burner because I did not want them to be raised in anything less than a very present mom. So I felt like I had to put myself aside to help them. And um, while that's very understandable, there should be times that you should try to put yourself first and to take that time for yourself because there were times where I was literally running on fumes, you know, like emotional fumes, physical fumes, mental fumes. And I look back on my life with a lot of regret because I missed out on a lot of things because I was on fumes. Constantly, constantly going, 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 going. I didn't ever have the energy to stop and savor the moment because I was constantly like just wanting the days to end. But hey, I was a present mom, right? It is absolutely crucial and important to take that time for yourself because if you want to enjoy life, you have to take that time for yourself. You don't want to look back like I do, crying all the time, because you, even though you were present in life, you weren't present in life. You were just surviving, like literally taking it minute by minute so that you could, for me, it was me, I wanted to put the kids in bed so that I could literally get the large size of peanut butter M&Ms and I would seriously stuff my face with it. I would eat it in one sitting. And then I would eat whatever other snacks were around. That was like what I did. That was my daily ritual. I lived for nighttime. Like I survived until nighttime and then I would binge. And that was the cycle over and over and over again. It was important that I had to put myself first at times. There, it was important that I had to lean on other people to help me take that time out for myself. There were many times where I would ask my friends to babysit my kids so I could go to the gym. There were many times where if my husband was home, I was like, all right, I'll be back in an hour and left to do something for myself. And there were many times where I would um, take time out with my friends so that I could find who I was, you know, and just like, and stop being so lost in, in this life that I felt was taking away so much of my time, you know. Um, not that motherhood isn't rewarding, don't even think that I'm at all saying anything like that. And if you think that I'm saying that, then you're wrong. So when you decide to start a hobby, um, like for instance with YouTube, like I'm gonna give this, this is a, the example, like I wanted to do YouTube. I did not know how long I would want to be doing YouTube. So in that regard, instead of me going out and buying the most fancy camera, the most fancy editing software, the most fancy equipment, um, taking lessons or, or uh, classes or whatever on how to use all this stuff. Instead, I just did it step by step. I started out using my phone and I uploaded uh, Microsoft or is it Windows? Yeah, Windows Movie Maker for free onto my computer. And that's how I did it with my phone, something I already had and something in a program that was free. And it just built from there. And then I started incorporating a different camera. I started uh, using different software here and there, getting different things to help me with this. I got lights, you know, like the lights I got a couple years ago, I want to say. Um, probably one of the best investments I ever made because lighting is so important. 
um, when it comes to doing camera stuff, but like all these things I saved up for. I paid cash for all these things and I built up to do it. I didn't suddenly just drop a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars um, on my credit card to get all these things when I wasn't even sure if I would be doing it in six months, a year, two years. When it comes to the gym, I firmly believe it needs to be the same way. I, I know that there are people who would disagree and they probably would say no. You need to immediately just quit that old life of yours where you're eating unhealthy and you're being lazy and not taking care of yourself. No. What you need to do is you need to take baby steps when it comes to the gym. First off, like, you know, I read different things. I read that like 70% of your body is intake and then I just read on Instagram that 90% of what your body is, is is by intake. So food. Food is definitely one thing that we all know that we need to do better on. But we do have, at least for me, I have an, a very huge emotional connection to food. For instance, when I am stressed, when I've got anxiety, you better believe that I want probably the biggest heaping slice of chocolate cake or when I like I hang out with girlfriends like what is it I want to do with girlfriends I want to eat so I'm always like hey let's have a girls night let's go to the cheesecake factory like let's go to the cheesecake factory and just order like a plate full of cheesecake because I will eat it all because I like being like social and eating at the same time so with food for some they can like quit cold turkey and and do a diet and do really well on it for other people it's baby steps in that department as well you could do, start off with just giving up bread giving up just bread. There is a YouTuber that posted on Instagram how he lost 60 pounds just giving up bread. It wasn't carbs, it was just bread. There's a lot of friends who give up the soda. Like, I'm just gonna give up the soda for now. And then they can incorporate more things or add more things onto the list of things to give up. I, I think when we bite off more than we can chew or when we dive in too fast, we end up burning out and we give up. And so I'm all about the baby steps. Just take little steps, okay? Just remove the bread for now. Now let's remove the sugars, you know, until you can get a grip on the things that you want to give up and that you realize, oh, I am okay because I understand when we do things like a massive diet, it kind of freaks us out a little bit <laughs> and then we fall off the bandwagon and then we go back to eating or we get super depressed because we miss that food, right? If jumping in and, and doing a diet is something that you can do and something you think you can sustain doing, then do it. But if it's something that you think you're going to only do for a little bit and then fall off the bandwagon, I am all into weaning off of things until you can reach that point of, of being healthy. Now, going to the gym and doing that, again, that's also baby steps. I tell people all the time, I say, go to the gym and just walk the track. Just walk it. Walk it for 30 minutes. And do that until going to the gym is a habit. Also, music is a big thing for me. So find a playlist of songs that you absolutely love and do not listen to them any other time than at the gym. Because then, gym's a little more fun. You have fun music and you're just walking the track. Or if you have a lot on your mind, go to the gym and just walk the track. Like make gym a habit. And then after that, say, okay, now that gym is a habit, I'm gonna walk the track a little bit longer. Or now I'm gonna try jogging on the track. And then incorporate weights, incorporate light weights. Uh, I have a friend who said she's embarrassed to go to the gym because she doesn't know how to use the machines. Girl, I understand. <laughs> I completely understand. And it's embarrassing turning to somebody and being like, um, can you help me on this uh, machine, please? It's not something that many of us want to do. Like, it, for me, it's a pride thing as well. I don't want to go and ask someone how to use this machine. I already want to be boss at it. So I will do things like looking up online on videos, even on Instagram. There are, they, they will show you how to use a machine or how to use free weights to get the desired, you know, muscle building that you want. Again, it's just, it's all just baby steps. And I know there's a lot of us, me included, a lot of people want a quick fix. They want something that will have them feeling and looking good immediately. And I have to say that that isn't completely attainable. That's one reason why I really liked the HCG diet was because I could lose weight fast on it, um, but I, again, I'm not doing the HCG diet anymore, but you have to consider how long did it take for you to get here? You know, if it took a year to get here, don't expect that you're going to lose it in a month. 
sorry, that's just how it works. If you want to have that rockin' body that you had back in high school, or back pre-pregnancy weight, or back when you were, um, you know, working nine to five out as a lifeguard, you have to understand that it's gonna take work and it's gonna take time, but the beauty in it taking work and taking time is you get to have that sense of pride and accomplishment in what you've done. And you could say, look, look at what I did. Look at the care I did for myself and look at how I look and I feel great. The true feeling of accomplishment is when you knew that you stuck it out even during those sucky times because we all know there are times when it stinks to be on a diet, when it stinks to be at the gym, when it stinks to be doing anything for our health. We all know that it stinks sometimes and yet we plow through it. That's the best when you can look back and go, yeah, that month in my life sucked, but I kept at it. There is one thing that really kind of bugs me and I know I don't let it get to me too bad because I, I want to believe that those who say these things to me are not um, intentionally trying to be mean, but I, I can't stand when, um, when I talk about changing up my diet or when I talk about going to the gym or when I talk about how anything that has to do with fitness and, and how people will say, oh, well, you're already skinny. Like, why are you changing your diet? It bothers me because, one, you're not in my body, so... When an overweight person says, hey, I want to eat right and exercise, people are like, you can do it, you can do it. But then when I say something like, hey, I want to eat right, I want to go on a diet and I want to eat right because I haven't been eating right lately, suddenly they're all like, but you're already skinny. I do understand that they don't, at least I want to believe, that they don't want me to go to extremes and then become too skinny, but the way it's said a lot of times frustrates me because I feel like it's judgmental. They're all like, well, you're too skinny. Now, now you're going to be more skinny? Like it's, it has nothing to do with skinny. Nothing to do with skinny, you guys. It's all about how it feels, like how I feel. You know, there is like a five pound limit, like where I can be at. After that, if I go above that, I feel like crap. Not only do I feel like crap, I look like crap. I've never been below this five pound thing, and when I do, my body goes into freak out zone. And I don't want it to go into freak out zone because I've already been there. I've been there and done that. I've already had the eating disorder. I've already had the severe depression and the suicidal tendencies being in that area of not eating. Why would I want to go back to that? Like, can you trust that I know what I'm doing with my body? I feel like people think that I don't know what I'm doing with my body. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. But yet, they want me to be totally understanding of the fact that they are living an unhealthy life. I feel like there's just a lot of hypocrites sometimes. You can go ahead and eat your five slices of pizza and I'm just supposed to be okay with it. Okay with the fact that you are slowly hurting your body. Like, how is that okay? How come it's okay that you can judge me for wanting to eat clean and yet I should not and I won't judge you for eating unhealthy? So I'm going to give you this analogy. I grew up with my brothers restoring old cars. They would get a car from the junkyard and they would do all that they could just to get it running. Even when it was super ugly, like I can't tell you how many times we've had cars that have had a, you know, beat up quarter panels and um, a car full of Bondo and all that kind of stuff just running around on the streets. But hey, my brothers got it up and running. And that was like their main goal. Let's get this running, right? Now that we've got it running, let's keep, keep getting the engine back to optimal performance or to optimal performance. I don't know if it's back to, I'm assuming that there was once a time when the engine was at an optimal performance, right? So we're gonna get it back to that. And now that it's at its optimal performance, they will now add extra things to it, right? Just to, um, you know, enhance, enhance the car's performance. And, um, and then finally, the body is done. And uh, then it has the shiny new coat of paint and all that stuff. Generally, the body is done last because you don't want to uh, take the engine apart and ding up your, your paint job. The thing I have to say is this. The moment that car looks fantastic does not mean it's the moment the car is done. Because what happens is we continue to drive this car and the car continues to wear down just like any other car. So the car does continue to need tune-ups, oil changes, um, a replacement starter, a replacement battery, a replacement alternator. But for whatever reason, someone looks at the car and goes, oh, that's beautiful. 
You don't need to do anything else with it. No, that's not true. You continue to have to take care of it. So true, my brothers could have this car that is now showroom ready and then do nothing else with it, but drive it around, use it as it should be used, right? And then eventually it'll go back to where it was when they found it at the junkyard if they do not continue taking care of it. So I get frustrated when I want to do maintenance on myself and people judge me for that just because of my exterior. Like, you're, you're not driving this car. You don't know how I feel. You don't know the fact that sometimes um, my starter doesn't want to work in the morning. You don't know that there are times where I am misfiring because I don't feel good. You don't know that there are times where I could probably use a whole electrical <laughs> upgrade because I am completely off my kilter. So the one thing too that I also have to mention is that we need to one trust that we're all that we all know what we're doing with ourselves right and we have to give them that we can't judge people for how they do their life how they live their life how they eat how they not eat how they exercise how they not exercise we can't do that because all we're doing is wasting our own breath wasting our own time you know it is no good for us to carry those things and and put them on other people when it comes to the gym when it comes to eating right when it comes to exercising whatever it is you want to do to be healthy just ask people for support there was one time where i finally uh had to ask a friend to just quit <laughs> with sabotaging like my attempts to be at the gym and to just support me and i and i remember that being a really hard thing for me to do but i remember saying can you support me in this because this is something that's important to me. And when I found that they agreed to support me, the, uh, the judging and the sabotaging went way down. Ask people for support, because support is huge, you guys. When you feel like you're doing it alone, like granted, there might be times when you're gonna be doing this healthy journey on your own, and you're gonna have to realize that you are strong enough and you are worth it enough to do it. But it is nice to have a little bit of a support system and to ask people for that support. So. Eating right, being active, going to the gym, what have you, does not have to be a huge ordeal that you jump into. I'm all about the baby steps until it's a habit. Just do that little thing until it's a habit. Now let's add something else to it. Now let's add something else to it. Know your limits and know that you can do things like eating right and exercising. Like know that you have it within you to make these changes. And believe in yourself. That's another thing too, believe in yourself. Love yourself. Remember that person that you love so, so, so much. Now love yourself the same. Because when you don't love yourself, like everything goes wrong. You need to forgive yourself. Like freaking forgive yourself, you guys. We're human. We make mistakes. We've done things in the past that are wrong. We know that. Forgive yourself. Let it go. Okay? Because you're not doing it today, right? And if you are, make those baby steps to change it and know that you are powerful, a powerful being, and that you can accomplish anything, and that you're incredible, and that you're worth it. Just give yourself a try. Keep trying. Like seriously, try. If you're trying, you're doing. That's it, even if it's baby steps. Even if it's like half a baby step, you are trying. Keep doing it. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the flip. Bye, guys.